Greetings, YouTube. Last night, my wife and I were watching some uh, movie trailers, and in particular, we watched the latest um, in a long line of uh, traditional space invader movies known as Battle Los Angeles. And the storyline looks fairly standard. Nice, quiet scene opening in America, then what appears to be a potentially very ordinary astronomical event, a meteors, turns into a space invasion. Um, and in the trailer, um, someone comments about the fact that when you're invading a, uh, a piece of territory in an effort to harvest its resources, the first thing you do is you kill the indigenous population, which is, of course, an allusion to what Americans did uh, in North America when uh, the Europeans showed up in North America and set about destroying as many of the Native American peoples as they could, so they could then access the entire North American continent. And if you were dealing in a purely terrestrial uh, kind of a uh, planning process, Europeans moving to North America, that makes perfect sense. But when you're discussing space invasion, which is when a species from one planetary system attempts to invade another planetary system, things are on a significantly different scale. Now, to get your species into space, a fully functional biosphere has to be placed into space. Because, you know, we're on a biosphere at the moment. The Earth is a functioning biosphere. So if you're going to travel between the stars, you have to bring the um, recreational vehicle version of that with you. You have to have um, a vessel that has everything in it that you need to keep your entire species alive long term. Um, because I have no reason to believe that there is going to be anything that violates the laws of physics, and the laws of physics say that you can't go faster than the speed of light. I'm currently reading a book on physics, and I will be getting into that topic at a later date. Um, but just take my word for it. You can't go faster than the speed of light. So that means that getting from one star to the other is going to be a very long-term process, which means you're, that the vessel you or vessels you're going to be using for this journey are going to have to have everything you need to keep your species alive. You're going to have to have air and water, an entire biosphere, plants, animals, microbes, the entire thing. You're going to have to produce a small planet and move it from place to place. Now, if you can do that, if you have the technology, which is going to be like another magnitude or more of energy usage than we currently have, if you had the ability to do that, you no longer need planetary resources. You have taken yourself beyond the shackles of this world. All right, This planet becomes superfluous to you. You no longer need it. So, here's the thing. You've got comets and, planets and ice on planets. You don't need water. No reason to ever go to a planet again. You've got moons out there. There's going to be comets that are full of water, ice. You never need to come onto a planet for water again. You've got asteroids, moons, uh, little rings around planets like Saturn has and uh, Uranus. So you don't need mineral resources. They're out there for the taking in zero G, folks, in free fall. You don't have to go into a gravity well to get them. You just literally pluck them off whatever object it is that you want them. They're there. You don't need volatile chemicals. You've got gas giants. You've got, again, comets, which are full of volatile chemicals. So everything you need is already out there in space. You don't need to come to a planet to get these things. And all you need to do is bring with you from your planet the plants and animals and microbes and things. But once you've brought them into your new little mobile planet that you've made, your spacecraft, you just add in all the chemicals that you find in space, freely available, and you're good to go. And you don't need power sources, because if, even if you don't have fusion power, which would be almost impossible for you to not have fusion power and be able to pull this off, there's going to be stars, suns, stars everywhere. 
all the free power you could conceivably want and more is out there. You don't ever have to go onto a planet again. You are free to roam the entire galaxy at your leisure. So guess what? Space invasion is dumb. Now if you're a really paranoid species and you see any other species in the universe as a threat to your existence, and I'm not saying that particular school of philosophy won't exist, then all you do is launch orbital objects at your enemy. You grab hunks of rock and you keep chucking them at their planet until their planet's dead. Planet, problem solved. Boop, done. You don't ever need to land on the planet. You don't ever have to invade. You don't even have to know what the species you're killing looks like. You don't have to know their language. Their software. You don't need to know their software. There is no such no reason whatsoever to ever invade a planet ever again. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be a fun action movie. It could be a great action movie for all I know. I haven't seen it. I've just watched the trailer. But it's in a long line of alien invasion movies that make absolutely no sense. It's always bothered me. Um, it's a big gaping hole in alien invasion movies. It just fails miserably for me. To, it, it takes me out of the film. I can't enjoy it because I'm like, how can I trust a filmmaker that has failed to understand the very nature of their films to, to deliver me a good story? Don't get it. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just opposed to space invaders.